It's that time of year. No, not Christmas. That happened already. Not New Year's. That happened already. We're going to talk about some lists of movies, like the best of this year, except that's not this video, because I haven't seen all the movies of this year yet. So I'm going to do my list of most anticipated for next year, and it's going to be a great time. Fair warning, even though you see a Dark Knight poster and a Star Wars poster right behind me, uh, that would indicate that I'm a huge nerd. Uh, this list won't be full of like comic book movies and stuff like that. There may be like one or two, but it's uh, like I'm not going to be going through and being like, so Thor Ragnarok comes out this year, Guardians of the Galaxy comes out this year, because you already know that, and you're going to go see it, and it's going to make a lot of money, and it's going to be great. And obviously I don't really know the, the films that are going to be in big Oscar contention next year, because the film festivals haven't really happened yet. The... Uh, a lot of those movies operate on uh, word of mouth, reception, and stuff like that. But I compiled a list of films that intrigue me the most that I know about going into this year. And before I start my list, I'm just going to name some honorable mentions that haven't made the list, but I, I think are worth mentioning. Free Fire, I know it came out this year already, like it was at, a, it was at TIFF. Uh, I know that it technically it came out this year, but the wide release is next year, and I'm going to see it in 20, uh, next year. Uh, 2017. This year, this current year that we're in right now. Alien Covenant, I'm intrigued by. Kingsman the Golden Circle, uh, the sequel. It has Channing Tatum in it. I know that about it. Beauty and the Beast, uh, even if it's not really great, it's, it's gonna be, you know, lovely. Going Places. This movie is supposedly the spin-off for the character of Jesus from The Big Lebowski starring John Turturro. I don't know if it's actually gonna happen, but I would be very excited to see it. And Logan, because if the movie is as good as the trailer, it's probably going to be pretty good. Oh, and there's one more, uh, the Lego Batman movie. I think it's just going to be, it's going to be a ride. It's going to be a, a, a fun time for the whole family. And now onto my list. I am a big fan of top 10 lists in any format. I'm frankly addicted to them. I, I love the format of a top 10 list. So it pains me to have to say that I have to make it a top 11 list because one of the films in the list, I'm actually not sure if it's going to come out this year. Not sure if it's going to get made. But without further ado, here's my number 11. <music> Starting out this list for me is Get Out, which is Jordan Peele's feature directorial debut. There is no key in this Peele. It is just Peele. And it's not even a comedy. Like, there might be funny parts to it, but it's a horror movie. Like, it's a straight-up horror movie about a black guy who goes to uh, see his girlfriend's family. His girlfriend's white, and their house is, like, cursed and stuff. And I'm really interested to see how it turns out, because the trailer actually really intrigued me, and it's coming out in February. Number 10 on my list is going to be Logan Lucky. Logan Lucky is... A comedy directed by Steven Soderbergh. It follows two brothers as they attempt a heist during a NASCAR race. And the two brothers are played by Adam Driver and Channing Tatum. That whole sentence that I just said just I find to be very intriguing, so I'm looking forward to it. It's expected to be released in October. Next on my list is a movie called Downsizing. Downsizing is directed by Alexander Payne. The IMDb synopsis of this movie is a social satire about a man who decides his life would be better if he were to shrink himself. Directed by Alexander Payne of The Descendants and Nebraska and other films. And it stars Matt Damon and Christoph Waltz and Kristen Wiig. Kind of sounds like the perfect cast for this kind of movie. Um, I'm really intrigued by this idea. It might be, it might be terrible, but it might be great. And it's coming out in December. Number eight on my list is called Suburbicon, and it's directed by George Clooney. A uh, common theme of this list is going to be uh, directors, well-known directors, and IMDb synopsis. Uh, the IMDb synopsis of this movie says that it is a comedy that hilariously tackles uh, 1950s suburbia and a, a home invasion that goes wrong and the family turns to betrayal, backstabbing, and blackmail and stuff like that. And the cast includes Julianne Moore, Oscar Isaac, Matt Damon, and Josh Brolin. And I find that whole thing to be intriguing, and I think George Clooney is a really good director. Um, so, I'm in. I, I, I don't know when it's being released. It doesn't say on IMDb. I'll be holding my breath for however long it takes. 
Next I have a sci-fi film called Annihilation. Annihilation is directed by Alex Garland, who did Ex Machina, one of the better sci-fi films of the last few years. But this one, I think, is, is a bit of a step in, in, in a different direction. Uh, this one, the IMDb synopsis is of, it says, a biologist who sets out on an adventure where the rules of nature don't apply. So it's probably going to be like super cerebral and like dreamlike and and kind of intellectual and weird and, and, and that's what I'm hoping for. Of, of course, no, there's no pictures or a trailer or even a release date, but those names attached, oh yeah, one of the names attached is Natalie Portman great actors. Um, that gets me excited and I'm really looking forward to it. Of course it doesn't have a release date yet on IMDb. Who would have known? Next is a movie that's premiering at Sundance later this month. It's called The Discovery. Uh, it is a love story that takes place in a future where there is now knowledge that there actually is an afterlife. Um, funny story about this. Uh, before knowing about this movie, uh, you know, like creative minds, like like mine. I'm not saying that I'm creative or good in any way, because I'm humble. But earlier in my life, I was like, hmm, you know, it would be like a good movie concept along the lines of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It would be like a, a love story, but if they knew that like an afterlife exists, because if you think about it, all of our life choices, every single choice that we make, is is on the basis that we know that we're gonna we're gonna die. So, the knowledge of us knowing that there is an afterlife that we're going to go to would change every single decision we're going to make. So, if that kind of attention to detail is put throughout this movie, it will be really, really great, I think. Uh, and the cast includes Rooney Mara, I think, and Jason Siegel, and Jesse Plemons, and it's going to be great. Number five is a film called Baby Driver. It's directed by Edgar Wright. It's a comedy crime movie. But a young driver who gets hired to be like the driver of these bank robberies and, and crimes and stuff like that. And I just don't need to say anything more than it's Edgar Wright and he's doing comedy crime. Uh, my favorite Edgar Wright movie is Hot, Hot Fuzz and that was comedy crime. Number four for me on this list is the popular choice, and I, I'm not going to lie to myself, I'm really excited to see it. Star Wars Episode Eight. Uh, the, the, the simple thing is, in Episode Seven, I loved the characters, I found it to be so charming, and I, it, it, it got me really excited for where this franchise is, is going to go. And now this next movie, directed by Ryan Johnson, who did a great job in movies like Looper, movies like, I've only seen one movie of his, but he directed episodes of Breaking Bad also. But as I stated, I love these characters. Um, I, I love this world that, that we're in, I love the trajectory, and I'm really excited to see it. Now this next film on my list is the one that I don't know if it's going to be released this year, or next year, or whatever, so I decided to make a top 11 list. Um, but this film sounds amazing. It is The Man Who Killed Don Quixote, and it's directed by Terry Gilliam, stars Adam Driver. It's a time-traveling adventure, abs absurdist adventure, directed by Terry Gilliam, starring Adam Driver, involving Don Quixote. It sounds amazing! I hope it's d released this year so I don't look like a buffoon. Number two on my list is Blade Runner 2049. The trailer was really good. It showed very little, but that's okay. The trailer is very good. I love Blade Runner. It's like one of my favorite movies. Uh, I love Ryan Gosling. He's great. I love Denis Villeneuve. He's great. I love Roger Deakins. He's great. I, hopefully it's all just great. And now for my number one choice, and you know that it's a Jake Sheardown list, when uh, the number one choice, the number one most anticipated movie, doesn't even have a title yet. There's never a release date or a title. It just has two names attached, and that's enough for me. My number one film is the as of yet untitled Paul Thomas Anderson and Daniel Day Lewis reunion for a 1950s fashion drama. 
I don't really need to say anything more. It's Daniel Day-Lewis's first film in like five years. Dan it's Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh my, it's Daniel Day-Lewis. He's doing a film in 2017. And of course, Paul Thomas Anderson is like my favorite director. I shouldn't say is like my favorite director. He is my favorite director. He's actually tied. Spike Jones and him are both my favorite directors. But it was just such a simple decision for that to be my number one. So those are my most anticipated films of 2017. Uh, I apologize for not having very much information on these films other than uh, synopsis. Uh, what I'm going to do in the description below, I'm going to post the links to the IMDb pages. So if you have an IMDb account, you can add them to your watch list so um, you can keep track of them. Uh, otherwise, I hope this this video was informative uh, for you in any way so you can keep uh, these films in the back of your mind, uh, be on the lookout for them. Uh, 2017 hopefully is a better year for blockbusters too, but I, I chose not to really talk about them in this video, seeing as the blockbusters this year just didn't warrant very much conversation, so I just I wanted to talk about other things. I think you'll notice that in my top 10 of 2016 also. Okay, this is a really long, drawn-out outro, so... Uh, bye.